The time is 6.15. Here is the news edited by Dinini Gunavardhana, read by Victor Raj. Here are the headlines of the local news. The Premier stresses the need for case studies on major power projects to prevent underutilization of capacity. S.C. Muthukumaran is sworn in as a member of parliament. Cabinet approval is granted for the school food program for the pri primary section students in the government schools. Two floating solar power plants are to be built. No confidence motion against the speaker is handed over. Foreign news. Kiev says Russia Black Sea Fleet ship is damaged in drone attack. Sports news cricket. Patum Nisanka is nominated for ICC Men's Player of the Month Award for February. Local news in detail. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana stressed the need for a case study on major power projects to prevent underutilization of capacity, addressing the AICPA and CIMA Convocation 2024. He said qualified chartered global management accountants have an important role as future business leaders of the country. Recalling that Victoria Hydroelectricity Project, completed 40 years, was the most expensive plan undertaken by the country. He said that its power generation is only 80% of the full capacity. If the full capacity had been utilized, it could have saved the most amount of money now spent for the high-cost power generation from diesel or coal. The Prime Minister said that ICMA members are held in great esteem by the employees and the general public for the trust they have created and their abilities in adding value to organizations, be they in the private or public sector, and added that the young graduates should make such serious studies in line with the CIMA's motto, Honesty, Accuracy and Justice. S.C. Muthukumarana of the Sri Lanka Podhijana Paramana was sworn in as a Member of Parliament today. Bills on secured transactions, trust receipts, mortgages, lease financing, local trust receipts, companies and document registration bill which were postponed for the second reading debate on, first, on last February 20 were debated today. Joining the debate, State Minister Dr. Suran Raghavan said that the productivity of the public sector should be doubled by 2030 in order to develop the country. He also said that a structural change should be made in the state service. Professor Charita said that the salary hike of the central bank is unacceptable. He also said that amendment should be made to the Central Bank Act so that such action do not take place. MP Madhura Vithanagar said that the country's economy is getting into a state of the influx. Therefore, it is possible to reduce the price of the electricity and fuel, but some people are making to, working to make the country anarchy. He also said that the public defeats such efforts. This news comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Continuing with more local news, Minister Dr. Bandalukunavardhana said that the implementation of the school food program for students from grades 1 to 5 in government schools has received cabinet approval. The government revealed that the school food program is implemented in 7,902 schools belonging to 100 education zones in Sri Lanka. The program covers a total of 1.08 million of the school student community and an amount of 85 rupees is spent per day for a meal for one student. However, the Committee of Officers to study this matter has reported that an appro approximately amount of 110 rupees is at least spent for a meal as a result of the price fluctuation. Moreover, the Save the Children Organization has agreed to provide three items of food to 200,000 students in 917 selected schools for the year 2024 
under the school food program. Accordingly, the cabinet approved the proposal passed by the Minister of Education to escalate the amount spent for the meal for a student up to 110 rupees. The Ministry of Education will allocate 0.99 hectares of water surface area and 0.1 hectares of land area from the Chandrika Weather and Kiriban Weather Reservoirs for two floating solar power generation pilot projects. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved a proposal by the Minister of Education to make the allocation for the two projects which are the results of an agreement between Sri Lanka's Ministry of Power and Energy and the Korean government's Korea Institute for Advancement. A statement from the Government Information Department said the land and water surface areas will be granted to the Sri Lanka Solar Energy Authority on an annual lease basis for running the two solar pilot projects, each with a capacity of 1 megawatt. Implementation of the proposed projects will add about 3 gigawatts hours of annual electricity generation to the national grid. The no confidential motion against Speaker Mahindyapa Abhivardhana, signed by 44 parliamentarians, was handed over to the Deputy General Secretary of Parliament today. The no confidence motion alleges that the Speaker had ignored the Supreme Court's recommendations pertaining to Section 13, 17, 20, 33, Subsection 6, 34, Subsection 1, 35, Subsection 1, 21, 22, and 33 of the Online Safety Bill. Speaker Abhivadhan is also accused of allowing the third reading of the Online Safety Bill to be passed without a vote and disregarding the Chief Opposition Whip's call for a division at the committee stage. Further, the Opposition MP noted out that the Speaker had unconstitutionally and unlawfully used his decisive vote to affirm the appointment of IGP Desabandhu Tenakon. That ends local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. The Ministry of Finance has announced that a team of IMF officials is set to visit the country on Thursday. The visit aims to address critical financial matters, particularly related to the third tranche of the IMF-supported program for Sri Lanka. The Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, Mahinda Sirivardhana, confirmed the upcoming visit. The IMF officials are scheduled to hold discussions with key stakeholders, including President Ranil Vikramasinghe and other high-ranking officials. That ends main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. Moving on to watch light. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved the proposal to proclaim a day for assistance to and protection of victims of crime and witnesses. Accordingly, the 7th of March is proclaimed as the day to support and protect victims and witnesses of crime. The National Authority for the Protection of Victims of Crime and Witnesses has organized many programs to mark this event a program to educate school students, teachers, government officials and elders is scheduled to be held at the Anuradhapura Mahavilachya Central College Radha Cultural Centre on March 6th and 7th of this year. Let us watch light. Coming up, World News. Headlines first. Key users, Russian Black Sea fleet ship is damaged in drone attack. France enshrines access to abortion in the constitution. Freezing rain and unexpected snowfall hit remote areas of Pakistan. Foreign news in detail. A Russian patrol ship has been damaged after being attacked by the sea drones in the Black Sea, according to Ukrainian intelligence. 
The Sergio Cotto, which was launched in 2021, was allegedly hit in early hours of this morning. Ukraine's military intelligence service said the Black Sea Fleet ship suffered damage to the stern as well as right and left sides. The Kremlin is yet to comment in this regard. French lawmakers approved a bill yesterday to enshrine abortion rights in the France's constitution, making it the only country to explicitly guarantee a woman's right to voluntarily terminate a pregnancy. The historic move was proposed by President Emmanuel Macron as a way to prevent the kind of rollback of abortion rights seen in the United States in recent years and the vote during a special joint session of the France's Parliament to do a long-standing ovation among lawmakers. The measures was approved in a 780 to 72 vote in the Palace of Versailles. Abortion enjoys wide support in France across most of the political spectrum and has been legal since 1975. At least 35 people died while dozens more were injured as freezing rain and unexpected snowfall hit remote areas of Pakistan over the weekend. The extreme weather hit Pakistan's northern and western regions, clogging roads and damaging hundreds of houses. Experts were surprised by the snow as Pakistan is typically humid in March. Authorities said the heavy rains completely destroyed at least 150 houses and partially damaged 500 others. Electricity has been completely cut off in some districts for several days. The provincial government has provided relief supplies to affected areas and announced financial assistance for the injured and the females, rather the families of those who died. To wrap up the world news, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Kyiv's Russian Black Sea fleet ship is damaged in drone attack. France enshrines across access to abortion in the constitution. Freezing rain and unexpected snowfall hit remote areas of Pakistan. That ends world news. Development news. Sri Lanka purchasing managers index of construction indicates an expansion in construction activities in January 2024 as reflected by the Total Activity Index, which recorded an index value of 52.9. This marks the first time that the index exceeded the neutral threshold since January 2022. Many respondents mentioned that new construction work is gradually becoming available, while some suspended projects also have recommenced on a limited scale during the month. According to the PMI, new orders increased in January compared to the previous month. Most of the respondents mentioned that at the moment the availability of the both foreign funded projects and privately funded local projects is higher. That ends development news. Moving on with sports news. Three top order batters from India, Sri Lanka and New Zealand have been shortlisted for the ICC Men's Player of the Month Award for February 2024. Patumnit Sankar has been nominated for the title. He is a top contender for the ICC Men's Player of the Month for February 2024 after he slammed the first ever double century in ODIs by a Sri Lankan. The 25-year-old blasted 210 of just 139 balls against Afghanistan in Palakale and then went on to end the series with another terrific 100. Nesanka beat Sanjay Surya's 24-years-old record for the highest score by a Sri Lankan in ODIs. That ends the sports news. Go ekatiyana youth ekata life ke change ekata niyamita se penna aswa hage na dekha puri na habe karna youth ekata niyamita se penna friendship ekata menna the all new NSB itro mitro account NSB I am a plan for your dream business news sponsored by National Savings Bank the safest place for your money. 
The Commercial Bank of Ceylon has been declared the best SME bank in Sri Lanka at the Global Finance Award 2024 in an emphatic reaffirmation of the bank's status as the biggest benefactor by far to the country's small and medium enterprises. Already recognized by the Ministry of Finance as the biggest lender to the country's small and medium enterprises, Commercial Bank received the prestigious Global Finance Award in this sphere for the second consecutive year. That ends Business News. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go Ekakiana, you take a life ticket, change a cutter, near Meta Setrina. As for Hagena, the Kapuina, have a Karana. You take a turn, near Meta Setrina, friendship Betamena. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. Moving on to economic news. Officials said that Sri Lanka has lost meetings, incentive travel and exhibition travelers to competitors in East Asia and India due to minimum ro- room rates, as higher standard rooms are available in other countries at low prices. President of the Sri Lanka Association of Inbound Tourists, Nishad Vijay Thonga, said, the industry managed to retain a majority of booking made before the minimum room rates were imposed by the state last year. That ends economic news. Weather report. Showers may occur at a few places in the southern province and in the Ratnapura district in the, in the evening or night. Many dry, mainly dry weather will prevail in other areas of the island. Misty conditions can be expected at times in some places in the western and Sabragama provinces and in the Gol and Mathura districts during the morning. That ends the weather report. To wrap up the evening news on Radio Sri Lanka, let's take a look at the headlines once again. The Premier stresses the need for case studies on major power projects to prevent underutilization of capacity. S. Muthukumarna is sworn in as a member of parliament. Cabinet approval is granted for the school food program for the primary section students in the government schools. Two floating solar power plants are to be built. No confidence motion against the speaker is handed over. Foreign news gives us Russian Black Sea fleet ship is damaged in drone attack. Sports news cricket. Pathamnes Sangha is nominated for ICC Men's Player of the Month award for February. With that, we wrap up the evening news on Radio Sri Lanka. Back to my good friend and yours, Chandima Virakun.